today remember that Jesus loves you. And always remember that, that Jesus loves you and you are precious to our Lord Jesus Christ, to our beloved Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. And His plan for you is good. And you must trust in His plans for you. There are times, there are challenges that happen in our life. There are times there are challenges that happen in our life. But we must continue believe God's word. And God will turn things around for you. Amen. God will turn things around for you. I want to start <coughs> with something first because we want to pray for some things first. But before I pray, I want to share this verse, share this passage. Let us go into the Word of God. In Matthew, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. This is a prophecy that is quote from Micah chapter 5 verse 2. You, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So this is a prophecy that was about our Lord Jesus Christ that he was to be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. So this prophecy, when the wise man came to King Herod and inquired for the king because they saw the stars and they come to look for Jesus the king, Christ the king. And what happened is King Herod gathered the chief priests and the scribes and the people and inquired them where Christ was to be born. And they say that it's to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. And so what happened is this is a prophecy. It's a good prophecy. Is this a good prophecy? Yes, it's a good prophecy. And you know what happened? This prophecy reveal something that Jesus will be born in Bethlehem. And you know what happened next? What happened next is that King Herod wanted to kill Jesus. Wanted to kill Jesus. So he pretend and tell the wise man, if you found Jesus, if you found the king, Christ the king, let me know so that I may come and worship him. But actually, he was just pretending as you know what happened. So the wise man was being warned by God through her dreams. After they found Jesus, they did not return to tell King Herod where is Jesus. So what happened is it was a good prophecy about our Lord Jesus Christ. It was a good prophecy for Bethlehem. It was a good prophecy for Israel and the whole world, Christ the Savior born in Bethlehem. And you know what happened to Bethlehem after that? Verse 16, Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem, and in all its district. From two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise man. So it was a sad thing after that. Something sad happened. There is a lot of children, a lot of male children, aged two years and below was killed and there was great sorrow happened to many families and mothers right and 
there was also another prophecy in verse 17 then was fulfilled that was spoken by jeremiah the prophet saying a voice was heard in rama lamentation weeping and great mourning rachel weeping for her children refusing to be comforted because they are no more there was a good prophecy and it came to pass jesus was born in bethlehem but also something happened that the king wanted to kill jesus and was not able of course jesus escaped but something sad also happened for the people in bethlehem that is two years and below children were killed so why am i saying this the reason i'm saying this is because we are going to pray for a place that just two to three days ago that is on 12 of 12 of january something bad happened to this place and the surrounding place that is in u.s alabama tornadoes strike that place and many people lost their house many lost many things precious things precious memorable things they have they lost their house their vehicles there are people injured there are some death so we are going to pray for alabama and why am i also sharing this is that just before this ago i released a word a prophecy while we were gathering online prayer you can check out the prayer is on the if i believe correctly it's on tuesday that is 10 of january our online prayer i receive a word for alabama and release a prayer for alabama and not knowing two days later that happened to alabama and i want to say to the people in alabama if you have friends or relative you know of people staying in alabama i want you to encourage them i want you to encourage the people there because the prophecy i mean the word that i released the word that the holy spirit gave is a good word for alabama it's a blessing for alabama that out of alabama god will raise up mighty men and women of god god will raise up revivalists god will use this place the people in this place in these states to change other states perhaps even nations so i want you to encourage the people of alabama that god has something good for them despite what happened to them despite what happened to them i want to encourage you to trust god that God has something good for you. <coughs> God has something good for you. Just like what happened during Jesus' time when he was born. Herod trying to kill Jesus, trying to kill the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Because there is something, someone, someone important. I want to say to the people in Alabama that God has something specially in store for you. And what happened in Alabama is like something trying to stop the revivalists, the men and women of God to rise up from there. So I want you to believe the blessing that God has for you the people in alabama just like king herod want to kill jesus and actually that happened during the time that moses 
I was born also. That Pharaoh wanted to kill the male child also. And out of, out of, them came forth Moses. Moses that used by God brought out the children of Israel from their bondage. And he was a great man of God. God used him to help to save many lives. Moses and Jesus come. I want to encourage the people in Alabama that God has planned for you. Let me just pray for Alabama first. And I'd like to invite all of you to stand in agreement to pray for them. Amen. Father God, we give you praise. We thank you. We thank you that you have a plan for Alabama. You have a plan for the people there. You have planted your seed there. Your destiny in Alabama will come to pass that out of this place will come forth mighty men and women of God will be used by you to change many other places and life and save many souls and bring many to Jesus Christ and will bring revival will bring revival to their land and the lands around them. Lord, I pray that you will fill the people of Alabama with hope. You will fill them with hope. You will turn the evil around. Turn it so powerfully around that one day, yes, that day will come that the whole world will hear of the things, the good things that you are doing through Alabama. That many lives will be touched and many houses will be restored. Two days ago, many houses were destroyed, families were destroyed. But Lord, we pray that out of this place will rise up people, will build and restore many house, many nations house and family house in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And out of this place, Lord, we pray that it will come forth a spiritual tornado a spiritual whirlwind, a spiritual thunderstorm of the Holy Spirit that will change the world, that will change many lives for good, for the glory of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for healing for the people in Alabama and the surrounding place, even like Georgia, and the surrounding place we pray for healing both emotion healing comfort to the people there and also and also to those that need physical healing in jesus name i pray that very quickly very quickly things will be restored back in the name of jesus christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for your plan and your destiny for them. That the people there will continue to believe God's destiny for them. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for every one of you standing in agreement, in prayer, whether live or through the replay. Thank you so much and i want to also add in some more things to explain that this tornado sometimes people wonder is this tornado from the lord 
Let me share with you my personal understanding of God's word for this situation. This is not from the Lord. This tornado is not from the Lord. First of all, and then some people may ask, then is this from the devil? Is this tornado from the devil? And my answer to you is from the word of God that this tornado is not directly from the enemy also, from the devil. What we mean enemy is devil. Just in case there's some one listening, there, he's not a believer, he thought that there's some human enemy or some kind of terrorist. No, I want to say to you, why I say indirectly, indirectly, is from the devil is not directly from the devil you see what happened is in genesis let us go to genesis when after men fell they eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when adam and eve partake of the knowledge of good and evil something bad happened to human and the whole world Something bad happened to human and the whole world. In verse 17, because of what Adam did, the Lord said in verse 17, then to Adam he said, the Lord said to Adam, because you have heed the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I command you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and taste it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for thus you are and to thus you shall return you see what happened over here god explained that because adam you did that the ground was cursed curse is the ground for your sake because the ground was cursed, now the ground respond back. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Because of what he did, he affected the natural, the physical dimension. As a result, the physical dimension respond back towards him. Respond in a bad way towards him. You see, the ground is not going to respond well to him because of what he did it's not the devil directly control the ground to make the ground to make the ground don't respond to him well you understand you read it from here Clearly, the Bible explains. Many times people thought that the devil is so powerful, can control some of the nature and some of these things. So every time when some of those bad things happen, if they believe it's not from God, they believe it's the devil got such power. Let me share with you, not always is the devil that has the power to control the weather the physical dimension you read from here human always give credit to the devil as though he was so powerful that's why genesis is a very important book that many people must understand many first principles came out in genesis and explain many things the ground is cursed because of what he did caused the ground curse and as a result the ground don't respond to him well just like you root to someone, someone root to you. You understand? It's not because the devil can control the person root to you, but because you root to someone, someone root to you. You understand? You can want to 
cast out what demons and evil spirit, the person will still be rude to you because you root to that person. People ask me for prayer, and when I pray for them, later I found out that uh, this person was rude to people at workplace. That's why the people in workplace are rude to her and nasty to her and not willing to help her because she was not nice to them. So this is a natural response that caused some natural situation back to a person. And you know, the Bible is very interesting. The Bible in Genesis chapter 4, just another chapter, move down again, verse again, explain this principle. Verse 10, And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother blood cries to me from the ground. So what happened is Cain was unhappy with Abel because of something. Not that Abel did something wrong. And he killed his brother. Verse 10, And he said, What have you done? The Lord asked him, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Verse 11, So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Verse 12, when you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. You see what happened to the ground? Because the ground, the innocent blood was shed to the ground. So what happened to the ground? The ground will not yield his strength back to You understand? It's not the devil control the ground not to use his strength to Cain. You understand? It's what he did. His brother blood, innocent blood went to the ground, affected the ground. As a result, the ground don't use his strength to him. You see, so not everything that the weather and all these things is caused by the devil. He does not have so much power. Many times he used some of these things. And in the world, we will call it science. Some of them will call it science. But in the Bible, God explains some of these things. That this natural environment do respond to some things that human did as written in the Bible. So God explain it first. You know why God take time to explain all these things? So that we don't always think that the enemy is so powerful. And why I say it's indirectly from the enemy? Because, of course, the fall, like Adam eat the tree of the knowledge of good, it was something that it was introduced to Eve to Adam indirectly but it's not because he had di direct power to control the ground and many times he calls christian is the one that calls it themselves many christians curse themselves they speak of themselves weaker than the enemy because the enemy knows that you are in greater authority and power than him unless you don't know and Unless you relinquish your ability, your authority and power. Unless you yourself relinquish it. Unless you take the authority you have and curse yourself. You understand what I mean? That's what we have been teaching and explaining. I see Christians, many Christians ask for deliverance. They always put themselves lower than the enemy when the Bible says you are above the enemy. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, 20, 21. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Many other verses. 
So what happened is that Cain did it to himself. Adam did it himself. Of course, thank God. Thank God our Lord Jesus Christ redeemed those mistakes. And when it's redeemed, you must trust that Jesus redeemed. You must stand your ground. You must stand what is belongs to you. You must stand your ground. I remember many years ago, I have a friend. Many years ago, that was like more than 20 years ago. More than 20 years ago. I have a friend. He was very drunk. And he is not, he is a notorious person. He was very drunk and you know what happened? He went into the wrong toilet. He went to the female toilet. He went in and then there was a female uh, lady came in and the lady was shocked and said that you went to the wrong toilet. My friend was drunk and in his and because he's drunk he thought he was in the correct toilet. So he said to the woman you are in the wrong toilet. The woman was afraid. Thought that she was the one that went to the wrong toilet. And the woman was the one started to shaken. And my friend just as normal do his thing and then walk off the toilet. You see, the woman don't know her ground. The woman is not sure when she was being challenged. And my friend came out to tell the story how that woman was afraid. Because she thought that she was in the wrong toilet. You see, there are things that belong to us. We stand our ground because we understand God's word. Of course, the enemy is a liar. The Bible says the devil is a liar. He lied from the beginning. The father lied. He will challenge you. He will find reason to challenge you. You must know your ground. Especially your righteousness. Last week we talked about one of the things that you must understand is your righteousness. Is Jesus is your righteousness. You must stand your ground. You must hold on to your ground. He will say, but you did this, you did that. You are not righteous. And I'll show you the verse. The Bible says that God caught the ungodly just. Means he pronounced the ungodly just. You must stand your ground that you are righteous in Christ. You have higher authority than Him. You must understand that. And what rights have He to challenge you? He is also a fallen being who did something worse than you. You know, in Chinese, there was a saying that a thief went to a place to steal something and he saw another thief. You know what happened to one of the thief? The thief shout out, thief, thief. Zay, Han Zay. There was a saying, the thief shout out, thief. So that people go and catch that thief. But actually, he is a bigger thief than that one. Even a worse thief because he was there to steal something and he even pointed for another thief. As cause the other thief get caught, which he is a bigger thief plus a liar. You understand? The devil is a thief himself. The devil is a liar himself. A liar, how can he accuse you of lying? You know, that's why Christians don't know their ground. And why we are teaching God's word, why we are teaching the Bible verse by verse, establish every week principle after principle verse by verse clearly so that your life will be built very strong you know your ground you know those verses and sometimes people don't understand why we are doing something say that you are preaching the same thing but we are using different verses to establish that so that you know that the bible actually many times tell you the same thing why god take comes to tell you the same thing because he wants you to be reminded and reminded and recently my children said 
of a drama show there was a show that every series will end the same thing about something good about this person same thing because this person is very good in what she is doing and then she will always overcome it because she is very good in what she is doing and she stood on to her principle my children say that this show always same thing same thing so why watch this show let me share with you something and i told my children it's important you know this show keep on repeat this thing the people who watch their mind started to be affected by it because every time they watch this show let's say every day they watch one episode and this show have many season and they actually have many season i don't know how many season but i know there are many seasons and every season is more than 10 episodes so imagine every day someone watch this show for 30 days this person was reminded of this principle that this lady took her principle and she is very good in what she is doing and next episode same thing next episode same thing you know the message become very strong go very deep go very deep and this is what i also been teaching people that you must be very good in something in life don't be jack of all trade master of none you know don't be jack of all trade master you can know many things but you must be very good in one or two things in life so that you stand out from the rest and that show that is the show that proof it that is the show that trying to communicate that same principle be very good in one or two things especially one thing about especially at least one thing that is in the christian world you are very good in and something in the world you are very good in that so that you can use it to help others or in your workplace you know that's what happened and the people of the world there are people of the world they are very good in just one thing and they impact the world because they are very good in one thing not because they are christian but they learn to invest their time effort into one thing so that they become very good and they change the world so even in the world if people do that how much more if you are christian that god is going to help you and bless you to be very good in something plus you will have the anointing for it you will even do better than the people of the world but be focused sometimes the devil wants us to defocus because he know there is weakness he know it will minus the impact and the strength so he want us to be defocused amen so as a christian you be focused amen so that you can do something really very well and very stand out and you can bring great glory to our lord jesus christ amen so come back to this so understand the ground respond to what human did the world become hotter warmer is it the devil going to control it to make he has the power to make the weather become hotter no it's because human did something we are experienced climate hotter warmer right it's not because of the enemy can control it directly because human of course human mistake in some of the things the they did that cause affected the earth you understand so it's not because he can control it, but many times after that he tries to show it as though he's the one that has power to do it and christian was afraid because christian what happened because christian don't read the bible 
they like to hear stories instead of reading study the bible which the bible actually so clearly explains some of these things chapter 3 chapter 4 god immediately explains some of these things you understand god immediately explains some of these things so that you know that it's not because the enemy has so much power and it's not because he is the one that did those things so some christian they are not sure they thought it's god god is the one that kill all this innocent life it's not god kill this innocent life it's because of what human did so human did something that caused weather affected weathers changes of weathers things that they did cause there's a change you know tornado is caused by there's a change there's a sudden change of weather from there's a sudden change of weather from two different places collide and cause tornado change of temperature what i mean is change of temperature that's why cause of tornado you understand so these are things that like we share these are things that it can be caused by human being human being is the one that unintentionally not because they intentionally go and cause it without knowing without certain knowledge they went to do it do certain things as a result cause the weather hotter and all these things you understand so don't always think the enemy is so powerful if he is powerful you are more powerful than him you understand that's what the bible says that's what the new testament say understand so continue study believe learn god's word good teachings good teachings that show you clearly the word of god especially new testament principle of course you know that jesus christ has redeem us from the curse so just like just now we read in chapter 3 the bible talk about there will be thorns on the ground right and jesus wear the crown of thorns he took the curse for us so that when you till the ground if you are a farmer or you work you can start to believe for blessing if you respond to you well because of jesus christ amen and also over here when we read in genesis chapter 4 so now you are cursed from the earth which has opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand verse 11 right and that's why the earth won't yield his strength to cain so over here because the blood the brother's blood fell on the ground right and that's why the bible intentionally put on this verse, luke chapter 22 verse 44 She's talking about jesus and being in agony he prayed more earnestly then he sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the where ground the blood of jesus christ falling down to the ground you know why some of this verse was put in it's not just to fill up place it's to literally tell us that jesus blood did fell to the ground jesus blood did fell to the ground to redeem that mistake Cain did also to redeem of course many people will understand when Jesus was at the cross his blood flow from the cross down to the ground but in case they look for I want exactly a verse a verse to say that his blood went to the ground this is one of the verse that his blood went to the ground you understand to break that curse so that the ground will now yield his strength to you believers of jesus christ stand your ground know what belongs to you 
stand your ground don't be shaken don't move back don't because the devil challenge you you start to back off you start to give in you start to let him take over things you start to surrender your health and start to accept sicknesses understand this don't so stand your ground amen stand your ground amen praise the lord so this is actually not my message this is not the main message but it's so important to explain so many things there are so many things that i wanted to explain to believers and i like to encourage those believers who are praying with us especially you are praying for some breakthrough listen to some of the message because i can pray for you god can heal you miracles can happen but after that they can lose their breakthrough again because they don't know what belongs to them they don't know their ground you understand it's like a person it's like you know what happened when we eat poisonous food we eat poisonous food right some food that was not cooked properly and as a result you eat it you know that food is not good you went to eat it what happened you have stomach pain you have diarrhea sometimes it went worse you went to hospital they put drip on you they give you medicine to eat or even inject medicine to you to help you so a christian can be like this situation a person eats something that is unhealthy food poisoning went to hospital take medicine injection immediately heal within one hour after that went home one two days later we went to eat that same unhealthy food and then went to hospital again and in and out in and out so christians who don't know their rights don't know what belongs to them god can heal them as minister as brother and sister stand together to pray for them they experience healing straight away next thing they can lose it again because they don't understand the word of god God wrote so many things in a book, so thick book, expect us to read it. Expect us to read it. He wrote so many things, expect us to read it. Because there's so many things he explained that belongs to us. Stand your ground. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, like I said, this is not the main message, but it's really something important to explain because of what happened recently amen to alabama so we need to explain some of these things 